What's up guys, Adam here again, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to install an electrical outlet for a wall-mounted TV. Now, of course, you can use the outlet for whatever you want if you install another outlet. Of course, anything that has a plug on it can be used by it, but in this case, it's gonna be for a wall-mounted TV that I'm gonna be putting up here in my garage. Now, you might be also wondering why not just use this electrical outlet that's down below, and I could, but I like to have my wires hidden, and I know that they make kits where you can run your wire down the wall and it can be covered up. I've used them before and they work fairly well. And I also know that there's kits that you can cut out a part of the wall up where the TV is, run the wires down beneath the sheetrock, and then there'd be another hole here where the wires exit and you plug it into the electrical outlet down below. That is actually against code. You cannot run your wiring from your TV down through the wall. Regardless of all of that, it's always just better to have, in the case of having a wall-mounted TV, it's always just better to have an electrical outlet designated up by the TV. So, all that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's go. going to be all of the items that we're going to need in order to do this installation today and of course we've got our old work box here you also need wiring now depending on your circuit depends on what size of wiring you're going to need this for me is 14.2 it's a 15 amp circuit so i'm putting 14 gauge wire in if you are doing a 20 amp circuit you would probably want to install 12 or 10 gauge wire of course we've got a plate for the outlet a tamper resistant outlet to install and of course our wire nuts for bringing all those wires then together all right so these are the tools that you're really going to want in order to make this installation as easy as possible first this is just a cheap multimeter to make sure that the power is in fact off once we turn off that circuit breaker i've also got this gfci outlet tester that i really like to use once all the wiring is complete of course we got screwdrivers those don't need any explanation wire strippers. These are lineman pliers. This is a stud finder to figure out where the stud is up above so we don't cut a hole where we should not. And of course, we've got a drywall saw in order to cut a nice hole. But what I'm going to be using, because I think it makes just everything so much easier and makes nice clean cuts, is this multi-tool here. All right, so first we're going to locate the circuit breaker that's supplying the power to the outlets that we will be connecting to and turning it off. Now that circuit breaker is off, I can now remove the cover plate and check the terminals on each of the outlets to make sure that there is no power going to them. I'm going to start out by taking a stud finder and going in the area of approximately where I'm going to want the outlet to be to figure out where any studs may be. So once I found the stud in the wall, I can then take my electrical outlet box and trace around it for the hole that needs to be cut. And I'll bring it up to right next to the stud. That way I know that in this case, when I'm pulling my wire, it's a straight pull up. All right, so now I've got my hole cut out. I now need to remove the outlets from the box that I'm gonna be connecting into. Next, I ran a fish stick up through the old outlet box underneath of the sheetrock and up towards the new hole for the new outlet. Once the fish stick reached the hole, I reached in and pulled it out. Next, I attached the wiring to the fish stick using electrical tape and then pulled it down through the wall and down into the old electrical box. So now that the wiring is run through the wall, now I can install the top box and run the wiring up into that box. I can now place it into the wall and then turn those screws that I showed you earlier with the wings on them. As I turn them clockwise, it's gonna push those wings out. And as I continue to tighten down on those screws, it will basically sandwich the drywall in between the wing and the outside of the box, making it nice and secure in the wall. Now I can really get started with installing the new outlet in the new box. So I'll start by trimming the excess wire coming out of the box. I'll trim it down to where I have at least six inches coming out the front of the box. All right, so now I've got my three wires separated here, my hot wire, my neutral wire, and of course, ground wire. So first I'm going to just strip the insulation off of the black and the white wires. 
So when installing outlets, it's important to understand how they're to be wired because th a lot of them are different. So on the back side here, a lot of the times what will happen is you'll have to curl your wires to go around the terminals here. On this particular outlet, they will just go straight in underneath of that metal piece right there. And then the terminal will actually screw down on top of it, tightening it down to the outlet itself, which provides a very good connection. You also have some sometimes that have little push-in areas where you can just push the wires in, which I definitely don't recommend using those because I just have found that they don't work very well. And every electrician I've talked to says that they don't work well either. So that being said, the only wire that we're going to have to curl is going to be for the ground terminal here. I'm going to start out with the ground wire. So I need to make that little shepherd's hook to go around that green terminal screw. So now that I've got that hook made, I can now wrap it around the green terminal on this outlet. Now, when having to wrap wires around terminals, the wire itself needs to be going in a clockwise direction around it. That just helps when tightening it down. It just helps to cause the wire to pull in closer to it to provide a much better connection. So now I'll connect this white neutral wire over here where these silver screws are. And again, it's just going to push in underneath of that plate that's in the back. And then once it's underneath of that plate, I can tighten down the screw on top of it. And so the same thing will happen with this black feed wire. It's going to go underneath the plate over here on the side where the terminals are a brass color. So we'll just push that up underneath of that plate and then tighten down that terminal like I did on the other side. So now this outlet is wired up and can be pushed back into the box. So here is where it can get a little bit more complicated. It's, it's pretty easy, but I'm gonna try to explain so that it's understandable as to what's going on here. So I'm just gonna take these wires that are coming down from that new outlet and just push them off to the side here. All right, so as you can see, there are two outlets in this box already. And the way that this is wired up is underneath of each of these wire nuts are pigtails and feed wires. So underneath, for instance, this wire nut here, the black wires, there's a feed wire coming in and then two pigtails, one going to each of these outlets, feeding them the electricity. Same thing with the neutral and the ground. So since I've already got all of my wiring done for these two outlets and it's all basically centralized underneath of each one of these wire nuts, feed, neutral, ground, it's going to be as easy as this. I'm going to take the wiring that's coming down from the outlet up above that I just installed. And first I'm going to start and take the ground wire from that wiring. I'm going to then take this wire nut off of all these ground wires here. And then I'm going to take that ground wire that's coming from up above and connect it in with all these other ground wires that were already underneath of the wire nut. All right. So now that I've gotten them all twisted together, I can now retake that wire nut and take all the ground wires from the outlets and put them all underneath of this one wire nut. And make sure when you're doing this that you're using the right wire nut size for the size wire and the amount of wires that are going into the wire nut. All right, so next I'm gonna do the same thing with the neutral wires. I'm gonna remove this wire nut from all of these neutral wires and join it up with the neutral wire that's coming from the new outlet. Then I'm going to put the wire nut back on top of all of those neutral wires. And then last but not least, our black line wire. So then once all the wires are connected, the outlets can be put back into the box. Now, if this was just a single outlet, the process would still be the same. I would need to make up some pigtails for all the feed wires going to the outlet, just like I have here, to where then all of the wires that are going to the outlet, the pigtails, the feed wire, and then the feed wire going to the outlet that's being installed would all be connected underneath one wire nut. So I'm really excited to have this dedicated outlet now. So now I can get that TV out here. It's gonna be really nice to have out here while I'm working in the shop. And of course I still have my outlets down here below and it's just gonna be a much cleaner look. There's not gonna be any wires coming down. There won't be even a trim kit. It just will look a lot better. And really this is the right way to do it. So. I hope that it was helpful for you. And if it was, please let me know by leaving a comment down in the comment section. And if you have any questions at all, you can leave those down there as well. And if you like videos like I just did here today, then consider hitting that like and subscribe button. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.